Welcome to Behind the Badge with your hosts, Lieutenant Ryan Williams and Officer Cammie Vandermullen, your source for all things Bonnie Police. KFIZ today on a Friday. That means Behind the Badge, our weekly visit with the Fond du Police Department. And this week, Lieutenant Ryan Williams happens to be in the studio. And I'm back. We're doing the, the Cammie Ryan switch every other. Right. We'll see how long we keep that going. Yeah. All right. We'll see how long, we'll see how long that goes. And it's, uh, it was, uh, the hot weather earlier this week was really what dominated the headlines. Yeah, and uh, with that comes a certain type of calls and it's kind of near and dear to my heart as being like a former canine handler and, and, and things like that. But uh, we get uh, we get people, I, I get it, they, they love their animals and they want to bring them with them everywhere. But those hot days, if you're going to a place where um, you can't leave the, the car running, which we were advised anyway. Um, leave your pets at home and air conditioning to play. Um, what happens is we'll get calls, usually at like, uh, you know, at a, at a Walmart or Menards or something like that, of a dog in a vehicle on a hot day. And I think most people know that the temperature inside of a car is a lot hotter than the outside air, and we've actually had dogs that have lost their lives from um, being overheated in vehicles. So. When officers get called to that, if we have time, and that's a big note, we will try to find the registered owner and, and, and open the, the car so that the, the dog out and get some air the, 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 the right way, I guess, the normal way. But there is a chance that we might have to either break into that vehicle or break the glass of that vehicle to get the dog out and rescue it. So uh, now, just because you wanted to have your dog come around along with you on a car ride, uh, you're going to have an expensive bill on your hands because, um, and possibly some fines as well um, for allowing your dog in a hot car. And uh, it just it always happens when we get this hot weather. It's just something to, to look out for. And uh, I don't know if people think I'm just going to go in and out, but, you know, it doesn't take long for that car to heat up and um, for, for bad things to happen. So, and, and as many, as you know, there's people that do that, there's a lot of dog lovers in here. So if you are someone that does that, someone's gonna call. Like someone is going to call. Oh, yeah. Cause there are some people that uh, um, are very protective of animals, which is a good thing. We love our furry friends, uh, but uh, they will call us and then we're gonna have to do something about it. So um, hot days, uh, if you can leave your dog either at home or um, be in a position where you're not leaving them in a hot car. Be smart, keep the, uh, keep the animals safe. Next topic is a uh, new restraint system. Yeah, so this is kind of cool. Um, you know, we, us in law enforcement, we're looking for different ways to kind of restrain people but keep them safe at the same time. And when someone is just out of control, like they can hurt themselves in a lot of different ways. Like you could even put yourself in a position where you fixate yourself, um, you could bang your head, um, you could start kicking at officers or, or people, or even once you get in a squad car, you could start banging your head. Um, there's a lot of different things that uh, you can do, which makes it our job difficult. Because um, uh, once, once you get the cuffs on, it, you know, people still can do a lot of things, right? With their feet, um, with sure. their head, and, and stuff like that. So um, knowing that, we were actually um, approached by uh, a well-respected um, uh, lieutenant that we knew and now retired from Appleton named Todd Peters who now works for this company called The Wrap. It's not the Bolo Wrap that those people that know different police technology, it's just The Wrap. And it's basically a restraint system that is a lot safer for people that are doing just those things, banging their heads and stuff like that. Um, and it, it keeps them in a good position so they don't uh, fixate themselves, so they can breathe properly. And it makes officers, um, helps them do their job a lot easier. So. Uh, I'm gonna try to describe it for you and see if you can picture it in your head, I'll do the best I can. So um, you would still put this on someone that's in handcuffs. So you, handcuffs are still, like, they haven't really made a better version of those. Uh, um, they work very well at securing someone's hands behind their heads. But um, the first piece that we put on is, it's a, it's a, a very thick, like a four inch um, thick, like uh, a belt around their ankles. So we kind of cross their ankles, we put their belt around their ankles. So, their feet are kind of together as one. So that makes it very hard to kick. And then there's, um, for lack of a better words, a very heavy blanket um, that's got like poles in it. They're, they're like, they're, they're inside the material that restrain your knees so you can't bend your knees. Okay. So your knees are straight and your ankles are together. So now you're, 
you're kind of immobile, um, so you can't do a lot of harm um, to officers by you know kneeing them or kicking them or anything like that. And then the last thing um, is basically a harness that kind of goes over your head. It almost looks like a mountain climbing harness. And that harness, it, for one, it secures your hands behind your back. There's a little loop so that your the handcuffs have. Because like if you have handcuffs on, you can kind of move your hands to the left or the right. This secures them in the middle of your back. And then there's a, a strap that goes from your, your belly area to your feet. And that kind of puts you in a 90 degree angle. So your feet are kind of straight out, you're straight up, your body's at a 90 degree angle. And that's just so you don't get yourself in a position that would asphyxiate yourself. You know, um, you can always uh, kind of stay at that angle. It also, having that strap, kind of keeps the harness from compressing your chest so that you're able to breathe freely. Uh, we've, we've seen, um, we've seen um, people die in, in police custody uh, for, um, for posi just positions they've been put in on and they haven't been able to breathe properly. So this system kind of counteracts that. The last part of the system, it's a, it looks a little bit bizarre, but it's a, it's a foam helmet. It's a foam helmet that they put on. Uh, you just strap it on. It looks like a, like a karate helmet, really. Sure. Um, and you put that on, that helps them from hurting themselves, banging their head. So I've been put in this system, and <laughs> you feel very, you can't do much, um, but um, officers are able to move you pretty freely. Um, there's not, it would be very hard to harm yourself when you're, once you're in this. You can actually be put in police vehicles. Um, you could be put on, um, a lot of times, um, patients that are exhibiting this behavior, they'll go on an ambulance to the, the hospital to kind of like, you know, maybe they need to calm down or, or figure out what's going on, what's in their system and stuff like that. So it's a good way for them to, to ride safe to the hospital and not put paramedics like, like lives at stake or have to worry about them being abused by these people that are going through these, these things. So it, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I wanted to talk about it here because people, uh, the first time it's applied on the road, because we're still in the training phase right now, but um, we're, we're far enough along where it could be tomorrow the first time that we use it. Uh, the, you know, people are gonna probably speculate a lot. What is that? What is this thing? Like, well, you know, what are they doing now? What is this? And and that's what it is. And it, it's yellow and black, so it, it looks, you know, you can tell it's, an, it's a piece of equipment. Um, but it's basically made to make um, our job safer and to stop the person from harming themselves and us. And if we're stopping them from harming us, that means that we don't have to use as much force to contain them, which makes everybody um, happier. And, and that. So it's called the wrap system. And uh, we've had um, we've had it for a bit. We're just getting like our policies changed and stuff like that so we can implement the training and get it out on the streets. And people will maybe see it soon because we've had a lot of instances um, act up where uh, we and I, we could use something like that. So it's been a, it'll be a really good tool for us in the future. Useful tool indeed. And one more topic: scams targeting senior citizens. Well, yeah, we covered that a lot last time on the show. So, um, um, you remember what what did, what did she all cover on that? Was there any specifically a lottery scam? Uh, the lottery scam. Um, most of most of these scams all involve for one. Um, the thrill of, of adding, uh, of you gaining a lot, right? Gaining a lot of money. But they all have one thing in common. You have to pay to get the money, like, so you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you're, you're doing that. Um, one of the things, uh, what we talked, I know Cammie talked a little bit about it last week, um, about scams and stuff. We're going to be covering that a lot in our Citizens Academy. So, um, what we're doing, and people that weren't aware of it, I know we've talked about it a little bit on this radio, but we're bringing it back. It kind of went away COVID year. I think they had like half of a year of a, of a Citizens Academy, so we're bringing it back. I'm trying to, I'm running it now, so I'm trying to make it a little more interactive. So instead of, a lot of times the Citizens Academy was really good, but a lot of it was kind of what I call sit and get. You'd be watching PowerPoints, and you'd learn a lot, but just not as interactive. Sure. Um, so I want to get people out of the seats and actually like do stuff. So um, I have some kind of lofty aspirations. I kind of want to run through people through police related scenarios. Not anything where, you know, we'd get physical, but just they'd have to think their way through, maybe give them um, like what we, we would call law enforcement shoot, no shoot scenarios. Like what would you do and why would you feel that way? And, and then um, um, kind of see where they're at and then kind of explain what police would do and why and then what the justifications are for each thing. 
So I'm really kind of excited about what that's going to be. From from doing that to even like talking about, um, we have our OWI, our our upper level intoxicated gurus, and kind of have showing them what our standardized field sobriety tests are, learning a little bit, and maybe actually having them perform them, which is a great party trick if you're ever out. Uh, find out uh, if someone is uh, intoxicated um, or not, or below that 0 0.08 limit. So. Um, yeah, we're really excited, and actually the applications have been pouring in, so there's a lot of interest. Uh, we are probably going to be capping the class, um, probably just over 20-ish um, applicants, because uh, other than that, then it kind of cuts into the learning experience. So, and this is our first trial of the new Citizens Academy format. Um, so if you can't get in, uh, don't worry, there'll probably be another one. But if you want to get in, get in now, because uh, like I said, that the applications are coming in. I probably get notified like one a day right now since we advertised it and that was just a week ago. So um, definitely a lot of interest as far as what we're doing. Um, it's a little bit shorter. I think we, in the past, we've drawn it out for a long time. Um, so it'll be nice. Maybe we'll be talking about the RAP you know, system. Maybe we'll put some people in the RAP, who knows? Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of different topics in law enforcement to cover as we do on this show. And, uh, I'm excited about that. Um, we also have, uh, we, I tell you what, uh, September, October, it is busy. Like we are, we are, we are very busy right now. We're starting our in-service um, in September and uh, it'll be in October. And for those of you aware of downtown, we're gonna be using, utilizing a downtown building. Um, yeah, the old um, building at Marion College was used to be AC Nielsen building for training. So if you see a high presence of cop cars down there, that's what we're doing. We're actually doing some, some training. We are gonna be implementing Taser 10, which uh, um, is the newest, latest and greatest Taser uh, weapon. Um, I could do a whole show on it, but just uh, briefly, uh, the Tasers that we have right now, they fire two prongs. So basically you have one chance to get both those prongs to hit. And if you hit both those prongs, they, they activate what's called neuromuscular incapacitation. And it basically means no matter what, you can't fight through it because it interrupts your pathways and it makes someone so they cannot fight and that gives us a window of opportunity to get them in handcuffs. Um, what Taser 10 does, instead of the two chances, or you know, the, like basically the one chance, we now have 10 like probes that we can fire, um, which sounds like it might be excessive, but this tool is actually so we don't have to use more force. So it's another way to incapacitate someone, get handcuffs on them, maybe even the wrap on them quicker, um, so we don't have to use as much force. And I say it, you know, a lot uh, to my patrol people, but sometimes a, a good amount of force used in a timely fashion outweighs, you know, waiting for a long time, and then you end up having to use more force because the situation presents itself, or the person uh, who maybe might, might be on some sort of stimulant or something like that and it allows that stimulant to take even more effect and puts them at greater risk for like some sort of heart incident or cardiac incident. So, like I said, a lot of stuff coming. <laughs> um, yeah. I've been busy, uh, we've been busy, we've got a hiring process we're right in the middle of, hopefully we'll get some applicants so we can bring in here from that. And we're hiring CSOs, so we'll still get those applications in. We kind of have an ongoing process right now. Um, we have a couple in the hopper that we got to do um, some interviews with, but uh, we are looking for them. And uh, what a great, idea, great, great idea if you want to get in law enforcement to become a CSO first. And we talked about that a lot in this show too. Behind the badge, KFI. <laughs>